Well, welcome, friends, to episode 7 of our study on the seven assemblies of the book of Revelation. And we're in letter number 6, which is the letter to Philadelphia, and we're calling that the Missionary Congregation. With me, of course, is Mr. Grant Luton. Why don't you say hi? Hi. And I'll remind you to... <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, dance, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I have to draw uh, a lot. Yeah, no. Um, I'll remind you to, to download and print off the worksheet so you can follow along yes. and have that uh, resource with you uh, anytime you go back yeah. and study these things. So yeah. We're having way too much fun doing this. I know, one. I know. I'm glad we're not <laughs> filming in what we do in between these recordings. <laughs> right. But uh, uh, I, I, yeah. since you did want me to say something, I just want to say what a great privilege it's been to be invited here to participate in these. It's always great to sit across the table and and talk about the things of God. And uh, yeah, this is, this is such a rich section yeah, we're talking so much about. Fun. Yeah, and and like I was praying either the last episode or two ago, I want to encourage you all to have these kinds of conversations. Like this, yeah. this is where it's at. I mean, this is. And in some ways, this is an intellectual exercise, and it's kind of good to stimulate uh, your, your thinking. But this is where we can dig in and really mm-hmm. find wisdom and truth in God's Word. And, and we've got to be do it bravely, yes. fearlessly. Just get in there and yeah. be honest about what the Word says, what God is saying, and recognize when it is what we think is not in alignment with it, yeah. and then just say, okay, yeah. what, what is the right alignment to have? Yeah. But, I, but I hope, if nothing else, in these kinds of conversations, because we did this a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. if nothing else, I would hope that uh, you all learn, you in our congregation and beyond, learn how it is that you can talk about God's Word. Yes. Yeah. How it is you can engage with it. How yeah. it is you can... Uh, be connecting with another uh, another person, another soul, when t- when talking about these things. Well, I'm so. sure. I, I wish we could be flies on the wall when the home groups are listening to mm. these, and then when the video is over, they start talking. Because mm-hmm. I know the insights yeah. that you oh, all will right. be coming up with are going to yeah. be amazing. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can send those in so Tim can share them with everybody. That would be great. Because you need more work to do. I you need, need more you. stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So we're in Philadelphia. Let's go ahead and, and, and share a little bit of uh, historical uh, context to this. Um, Philadelphia was like, um, was it Sardis? Yeah, like Sardis was affected by a great earthquake uh, that happened in AD 17. And so there was a, a bit of a, an upheaval there mm-hmm. that, that had a great effect on them. Um their, the backbone of their economy was vineyards. Like and cream cheese. And what? Cream cheese. And <laughs> right. No. Or am I wrong? <laughs> no. Wrong Philadelphia. Oh. Uh, was vineyards. Uh, but Rome did something that they wanted to have the best wine in the world, so mm. they completely destroyed the vineyards in Philadelphia, which was devastating to the economy. Mm. It's the youngest city of the seven that we're uh, uh, focusing on in Revelation here, and it was founded only in the second century BC. Um, It was more of a gateway of the Greek culture to the uh, to this to this area, and it's said, and this is this is interesting, related to the the previous congregation. It's said that the Church of Philadelphia is said to have come out of Sardis in protest, and if you remember. Thyatira was, uh, is that right? Um, yeah, Thyatira. yeah, no, Thyatira. Yeah. Some people in Thyatira left in protest mm-hmm. and went to Sardis. Yes. And so we see some people from Sardis leaving in protest to go to Philadelphia. So there's this kind yeah. of chain yeah. reaction that we see happening. And of in course, the, that in doesn't the happen today at all. No, it no, never not happens. At all. Right? Yeah. We don't. We don't get fed up with a congregation and then just decide to leave and then and then it just keeps Start going. Start a new going, denomination. Right? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So. Um, at this point, too, Christians were also ultimately removed from synagogues, opening them up to persecution from Rome, because yeah. uh, throughout all this time uh, um, in Acts and, and, uh, and, and elsewhere in, in the Greek scriptures, the Jews had a special con- uh, um, e- exemption in, mm-hmm. in Roman culture where right. they, could, they didn't have to call Caesar Lord, so right. they were safe, right? But that we, was the one religion that could be practiced. Right. So you were either a Jew of, or you were a Roman. These yeah. 
believers who were who were not Jewish, were not mm -hmm. Jews, who were not uh, obeying and, and calling Caesar Lord, they were in this very dangerous, vulnerable yeah. other position in yes. between that was just it was uh, detrimental. Um, so. Um, okay, so enough uh, of a brief background. Let's get into the passage itself. So we're in Revelation 3, verses 7 through 13. And the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, He who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens, says this, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut, because you have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them know that I have loved you because you have kept the word of my perseverance. I also will keep you from the hour of testing, the hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, so that no one will take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it any more. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and my new name. He who was, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit mm. says to the churches. Mm. So this is, following the structure of these letters, this is one of only two that has no fault listed. Right. The other being Smyrna. Smyrna, the um, persecuted church. Who had been suffering. Yeah. Right? yeah. <clears throat> I'm fascinated by that open door. I'm setting an open door in front of you. And uh, this church obviously was one that was uh, taking the good news out to the world around them. They were impacting the culture around them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the synagogue of Satan? Um, I, 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 I believe we touched on that before in a previous yeah, episode. Yes. Can you can you uh, let's define what that what that yeah. means? Well, Paul talks about uh, what a true Jew is, and a true Jew is one who's like Abraham. Mm -hmm. What was Abraham's quality? Hospitality, inviting the people around him to to embrace them, to love them, take care of their needs. And, uh, and Paul's saying, you behave like that. You you have a Jewish heart, whether you have Jewish DNA or not. But here are people who are descendants of Abraham physically. But instead of behaving like Father Abraham and hospitality and love for the brother, they're selling out their brothers for money. And they're turning them into the government. And I think we mentioned before, this is kind of a, a Judas mindset who sold the Messiah for money. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Yeshua said of Judas that Satan had entered him. So when he calls us a synagogue of Satan, he's saying um, these are not real Jews. They're lying. They may have Jewish DNA, but they're not behaving like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did. Mm -hmm. They're acting more like Judas did. And we can say, too, that, that Satan, it, it, the, the reference to Satan here is mostly drawing on Satan as a, a deceiver. A deceiver, yes, right. exactly that's, right. Uh, exactly. Satan is the adversary, mm -hmm. so, it's, right. so that's, that's what, what's going on. It's not necessarily a, yeah. a, a church that worships Satan. No, They're not no. Satanists, no. right? This is just people who are, who are, who are deceiving. And the Jewish people were chosen to promote God's program in the world, mm -hmm. but these particular uh, people of Jewish descent are working against God's program. They're, mm -hmm. they're aligning with the enemy who's an adversary to God's program. So mm -hmm. they, it, that's a, it's a powerful statement, and it's, um, it, yeah, it is not something you want to hear Messiah call you. So similar to the previous letter, um, or is it, which one is it? Where you, oh, yeah, it's in uh, for Thyatira, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Thyatira. Thyatira and this letter 
Oh, and Sardis, I'm sorry. Thyatira, Sardis, and this letter say, I know your deeds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. we, can, we, we can presume that that is not just general, I know that you've done things, mm -hmm. but is, is, a, is a positive, I know, mm -hmm. I know that you have done mm -hmm. good things, yes. right? Because that, that, we'll be judged based on our deeds. Mm -hmm. um, like I always say, our salvation is based on His grace, but our reward, our judgment is based on our deeds. What do we do with the time and the, and the energy and the possessions we have? Mm -hmm. And yeah, he talks uh, to the very, in the very first church in Ephesus, is in verse 2, I know your deeds and mm -hmm. toil yeah, yeah, and yeah. perseverance right. and so on. And um, so deeds are important things. Um, Again, we're not saved by our deeds, but our reward and our, our the judgment and what we hear from God is going to be based on what we do in this life. Right. So let's talk about so so. So what's interesting here is there's no fault. Mm -hmm. Um. But with Smyrna, we know that they were suffering. So yes. that 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 was what that was what they were mm -hmm. um, ordained to be dealing with. Yes. Um, right. Uh, but. Philadelphia here, uh, what would you say is the, is the main marker of Philadelphia as it's laid out here in this passage? Well, he, he says in verse 8, I know your deeds. Um, I put before you an open door, which no one can shut. So this door is a door where you go out, and I believe when we look historically what this letter represents, they're going out, they're taking the word of God with them. And uh, you have a little power. You've kept my word. So the, these are students of the word. And I have to believe this is referring not just to the Gospels, but to the Torah itself. Mm -hmm. They're starting to once again mm -hmm. go back and learn what it means to live a righteous life. And you have not denied my name. Uh, later in Revelation, we, we find that the people who... Uh, who God praises are the ones who um, kept their, their testimony and they kept the Torah. Mm -hmm. And we see the song of Moses and of the Lamb. I think this is a hint at that here. They're starting to go back and live righteous lives according to God's word. But they've also are holding on to the name of Messiah. Mm -hmm. So we could say that Philadelphia is similar to Smyrna in that all what what Yeshua is saying is hold fast mm -hmm. like you you will get you will get through this mm -hmm. right and so that and so in both of those circumstances this not that this is a suffering congregation but there's there's something that is, there is a um, an opposition mm -hmm. to them yeah. here uh, in in these synagogue of Satan uh, but hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. Like that, that is the, the circumstance you're in, mm -hmm. that's what you have to focus on. Yes. Well, he's telling them also to be strong, mm -hmm. be strong. Yeah. In verse 12, he says, he who overcomes, I'll make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Well, if you recall, in Solomon's temple, there were two pillars, one on either side of the, the door, the entrance that went into it. And these pillars had names. Uh, it's in... 1 Kings 7.21, it says Solomon set up the pillars at the vestibule of the temple. He set up the pillar on the south and called his name Yachin, which means whom God strengthens. Mm. He set up the pillar on the north and called his name Boaz, in him is strength. So both of these have to do with strength. The one who God strengthens and the one who's strong. He's mm. using his own strength, but here's one who's relying on God's strength. These two together are the pillars. Mm -hmm. And Boaz, we know who he is. You know, that's uh, Ruth's husband. We have his story and his accomplishments. Joaquin, his name is mentioned about eight times in the scriptures. We know nothing about him. So we have a, a Bible celebrity who is strong, and we have a nobody who's strong. And they're both there equal as pillars of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a Boaz, I'm a nobody. But I want to be strong, mm -hmm. and um, and there's no substitute for being strong in your faith. Right. So let, let's let's get into then the believer. What what type of believer is this, or what if we were to 
examine ourselves and say, this is where I am at, what would the markers be? Uh, yeah. Well, I think it's someone who knows the word, who's not ashamed of being a disciple of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. He knows the word, he's not ashamed of being a follower. And uh, he's a light. He goes out and he takes his faith with him. And um, he's sharing it. And you know, these temples, or these, these columns, where were they located? Hidden inside the temple somewhere? Out in the wall, in the, the courtyard? No, they're at the door. He says, I, I've set an open door before you. And so the reward is your, your pillars there by the doors going into the temple. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So um, this has to do with people who allow themselves to be a conduit between the world and between the Creator. Mm -hmm. And um, God's looking for people like that. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to be. I think it's interesting here, the language um, in verse 10. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance. Mm -hmm. Been steadfast. Yeah. The word of my perseverance. That, that, that's an interesting... Uh, it's interesting... Uh, uh, Interesting phrase. Interesting phrase, especially since we know that perseverance is, is one of those three. There's the, uh, the um, tribulation, right, the kingdom, mm -hmm. and perseverance mm -hmm. in Messiah. Yes. So that right. there's these three, these three aspects. Mm -hmm. of, right, back um, in chapter 1. Right. Um, yeah, the word of my perseverance. It seems like with, with these letters, there is a... We can look at them and say, oh, it's just a degradation, right? Mm, we could also look at them, I mean, uh, we, we could see yeah. that if that, that's our presupposition. But this Philadelphia is starting to bounce back. Right. So yeah. what, what we could see is that maybe like there's like this that keeps happening mm. and, you know, there's an up and a down and up and a down, mm. but, but that there is a net gain as, as we go through mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. letters, right? So there's, yeah. um, like we were talking with David a minute ago, once once the church, the assemblies were uprooted from their foundation of Torah, mm -hmm. they were set down on a, on a new foundation oh. that wasn't Torah, but there was still some improvement or transcendence to, to, to fix an issue, right? Yeah. And then it was uprooted again, still not placed on Torah, yeah. but, that, that, but there was still something else that mm -hmm. was dealt with and tweaked and improved and fixed so that so that again there's like a this this net gain over time yeah. uh, but still uprooting 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 until uh, you know we would reach our present right. day or beyond when things would yes. we presume be put back on the foundation yeah of torah. instead of just going back and doing the first works going back to the torah they're trying to patch up all the things that go wrong right. because they're not building their right. lives on torah yeah and and uh, that 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 is Part of, part of the developmental process, yeah. like there's there's a going away from the the origin and mm -hmm. circumnavigating, like you, you know we see on the map. We should yeah. bring up the map again. I don't know. We, we yes. did the map last time. Yeah. Oh, it is up. Yeah. So there's like this. There is this this route that's taken, right. and where does that where does that route end? But it ends in a place uh, that is that is pointing back to a source, mm -hmm. which it, if you look at it yeah. on the map, it, it's pointing toward where? Well, it's pointing toward Israel. Pointing toward yes, Israel. Right. Right. So it's pointing toward Israel. Because Israel is right on down here. Right. There, is right. A, there is this route it takes um, mm -hmm. that is ordained, that is, mm -hmm. that is it's meant to be yeah. you know, going out into the right. wilderness and being uprooted yeah. and being alone with God and, mm -hmm. and coming to face all the things that are... Right. wrong or that, that are profane, that aren't holy, and, and yeah. tweak those as we go and do the best we can. Well, you know, you mentioned wilderness because I was thinking just as you were talking, when you look at the Israelites, they're 40 years in the wilderness. They come out of Egypt, they're raring to go. They're like Ephesus. They're ready, they're working. But then there's this deterioration, there's death, there's plagues, there's complaints, there's all this whining. But finally, you get near the end of the 40 years, all that stops. You've got a new generation, and they're ready to go in and do what their parents failed to do 40 years earlier. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. I know in my life, right. I, my, I look at my walk with God, 
coming out of the gate strong, and then you go through suffering, and you learn, and you make mistakes, you fall on your face, you have doubts, but God uses all that and starts to bring you back to a place where you're and, ready and, to do His work. Yeah, and whatever at whatever point you are, removed from your original mm -hmm. uh, enthusiasm and yeah. joy and, and, and pure love, right? Yeah. Wherever you are, there, there is something, there's something to be found there of life that you yes. nurture and you keep going mm -hmm. and into the next phase, which you'll, you'll deal with something else yeah. in, that, in that phase of development. Uh, and then you move on and, and on. Right. So it's, it's not a, like again, it's not a net, it's no. not a degradation. No. That ends in destruction, right? No. It, 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 but it's certainly not everything's going great and you're doing everything right. <laughs> right. It's like this, it's life. It's, yes, it's just this it up is. and down, up and it's down. It's a bumpy road. Um, and so what kind, of, what kind of assembly could we say this is uh, indicative of if, if we're a part of a congregation? We look around, like, is this, yeah. is this my assembly? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's funny you should ask because as I read this letter, I think of... Um, of a congregation that's right in my neighborhood around the corner and um, I've, I've gotten to be good friends with a young pastor and and he's invited me to, to speak to his board and we get together to study every week. Uh, it's, I go ahead and make a plug for it. It's, it's a River Tree Church in, in uh, Hartville. And, um, and I've admired this congregation for, for several years because they're just doing it right because they're not inwardly focused about what, 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 everything about us. They're outwardly focused, and they make such an impact in the community. They're serving the community all the time. They're doing things that really make an impact in practical ways in people's lives, and God is just blessing them, and this place is growing. They're a joyful group. They love God. They love each other. In fact, that's what the series sermon is right now, that... Pastor uh, Richards has taken them through about loving God and loving others. And so they love studying the word, but they want to take they want to take their message outside the doors of the building. Mm -hmm. And they're very intentional about that. They are a Philadelphia congregation. Mm -hmm. they, they're holding fast to what they have. Yes. And they, they're keeping the word of his perseverance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a rare thing. I was I I I have to come confess that I was starting to get pretty, um, I don't know, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, disillusioned with what I see going on in modern churches out here. Mm -hmm. uh, but this has really restored my faith. It's like, Lord, you're, you are really working. So, yeah, we, yeah. We, we've talked before about, I don't know in this series, but we've talked before about how the, the, the chaos that's going on in the world we can look at it and be like, oh, no, this is only bad for yeah. us, right? Yeah. When in reality, when there is this kind of chaos and suffering, mm -hmm. the, the, it is ripe for people to be yeah. questioning big things mm -hmm. and turning to God and reevaluating what they believe. Yeah. Atheists, you know, I, I see constantly on 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 social media not that i'm on social media a lot i'm actually not but when i when i go i'm, I'm maybe it's the algorithm but whatever yeah. it is it's like there's stories of atheists who are mm -hmm. turning to god prominent mm -hmm. ones or agnostics who are like you know what yeah. like this is the best way i have to understand reality and like yeah. this i i need to be yes. i need to become a christian so it's yeah. so yeah so there's this uh, this natural progression yeah. from from suffering mm -hmm. into into this and, and and to think of that as an opportunity and to be yes. encouraged by it. I think right. we need to right. be encouraged by it. Yeah. Well, let's finish up with the. Um, Do we talk about church history? Where this uh, no, we have Okay, let's let's no. do that. Um, yeah, at the beginning of this period is somewhere in the middle 1700s. You can go a decade or two either direction, but this is the the change where God raised up some individuals. It has to do with people. And I think of the Wesleys. Mm -hmm. uh, the Methodist Church started with them. And there was a white field. And then there are all these great evangelists that just went out into the world, mm -hmm. just started sharing the gospel with people who had never heard it. Uh, and they're not trying to get people into church. They're leaving the building to go out into the world. 
Mm -hmm. And they're like, they were like modern apostles, like the, the, what they did there in the, the first century when Yeshua sent them into the world. And um, there was a great awakening, in fact, that's what it's called, mm -hmm. that, that arose out of this. So you see this evangelism, people coming to God. They may not have known the word as well as they should, and they maybe didn't learn how to keep the Sabbath and, and eat kosher and keep a lot of the commandments. But for Pete's sake, they were starting it out right, mm -hmm. and they had a zeal for God and for his word. They took what they had, and uh, they really made the most of it. Mm -hmm. And it turned the world upside down. Mm -hmm. Without that taking place, I don't think there would be any United States of America mm -hmm. that was founded and it was birthed out of this. Right. So um, that when we look at the, think of the pilgrims and, um, and the people who really just wanted to serve God wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and freely, it was all birthed out of this period of time. Yeah, and that's why we call this Philadelphia the missionary congregation mm -hmm. in, those, in the, those descriptors. Yeah. And it's also why in our country, the, the city in Pennsylvania was named Philadelphia, and that's where so much of our history was birthed. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no coincidence there. The, yeah. the, play, the, the city of brotherly love. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, so let's finish up with the kingdom parable yes. here. And this kingdom parable will be the seeker of pearls in mm -hmm. Matthew 13, 45, and 46. Yeah, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant. This time it's not like the treasure. It's mm -hmm. like a merchant, it's a mm -hmm. person, seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, there's a really powerful connection here with doors. You know, in, mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, God says, I give you the key of David. No man can shut, no man open, and I've put an open door before you. What, what do pearls have to do with doors? Okay, I'm just, uh, David, any idea? Yes. You go to the New Jerusalem, Revelation 21, and there are 12 gates in the New Jerusalem, and each gate, each door was a pearl. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So he's saying, I'm investing my life in the gospel of making an open door for people to come into God's kingdom, mm -hmm. to come to him, and to bring them in and to be part of the bride. So mm -hmm. the previous one, it says the, the, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid again from joy over it. He goes and sells all that he has and buys the treasure, he buys the field. Right. It's yep. almost like he's, he's only interested in geography. I just want to own this area as I know something's hidden there. Mm -hmm. But this guy's not here. And hid keep it hidden. And keep it hidden. And keep it hidden, right. Yeah. But this, this is a man here who's not interested in hiding things. Mm -hmm. He's not interested in fields and geography. Mm -hmm. He's interested in making an open door for people, taking this pearl of great price, something and where does the pearl come from? It's not like silver and gold, which is dead stuff. Mm -hmm. A pearl is something that's made out of a Sand living organism, and, yeah, it's out of a, an oyster. Right. Uh, and, and so it's, it's just a completely different dynamic. It is something that is hidden. It is it's, hidden. It's, it's made yes. in secret. It's made in the darkness, right. but it brought yeah. into the yeah. light. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just uh, it's a, it's a beautiful parable. And it's just, yeah, it has, it has this... This beautiful hidden connection. Uh, yeah, I, I do love that. That those two parables, how they build on each other, or there's a, there's a bit of a twist there, and also uh, Philadelphia and the one that preceded it, um, Sardis. Yeah, and the word um, Philadelphia means brotherly love. Right. And right. here the kingdom of heaven is compared to a man, a person who's doing God's work. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's great. That is great. Well, that seems like a good place to stop. I think this so. Time. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us for this episode of our Seven Assemblies of the Book of Revelation. We'll pick it up with our final episode, um, letter number seven to Laodicea, uh, the... <laughs> lukewarm. The lukewarm. Counterfeit. The counterfeit yeah. congregation. Yeah. Um, 
So let's uh, go ahead and close in prayer, and we'll see you again here in a little bit. Father in heaven, we thank you again for, um, for leaving for us treasure to find. Uh, and we pray, Father, that, that we would hold fast to that treasure when we find it, and that we would not, uh, not keep it hidden, uh, that we would uh, build on it, be strong, hold fast, uh, show love to you and to others as the two greatest commands on which all the law and the prophets hang, to love God and to love each other. Yes, uh, and we pray that we would, we would do more of that um, in, in our relationships, in our marriage, in our mm. congregations, in our communities, um, in, 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 in all of our interactions with, uh, your, with your people. We praise you and thank you for this book, um, these words that we can look at and study, and we thank you for language in which we can engage in conversation and discussion and dig up these pearls. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of fun, Father, and, and uh, we just delight in it. And so we thank you for this time. Bless our discussions in our uh, home groups and, and beyond, uh, and we look forward to uh, coming back together again for one more of these. We praise you and thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.